And one of the points was how Revit is preventing di digital construction. <laughs> so I was uh, curious to hear your thoughts about this. Oh my God, how much time <laughs> do we have, Nick? <laughs> 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 oh man, I have so much to say about that. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, uh, it kind of depends what you... I've come to learn that I think people think about different things when you say digital construction, because there's a lot of people around the planet now talking about digital construction, but I think it's a different thing in Canada than it is in Norway and Sweden, Denmark, Germany, you know, the Italians probably have a, have a different thinking about exactly what it is. But uh, in my small part of the world, um, what is mm, digital construction or not, the entire concept of digital construction because construction is many different things but the part of the the part of digital construction that is happening around here that is highly problematic for people using revit is that the drawings go away i talked about this also at autodesk university last fall in a different talk and the uh, people are wanting to digitize the information exchange from design teams to contractors and facility management and a very important component to that digitization is that they take away the drawings um, and when you do that a lot of information that used to just be on drawings kind of disappear where is the title block where is the tag where is the dimension line and um, and this information that still contractors need now when we're like and we're replacing the drawings with IFC models that is being streamed through common data environments out to like tablets and, and units uh, using 3D viewers instead. Um, so the data that used to be in title blocks and tags and dimension lines, it needs to be contained as attributes and elements, which is in a Revit language instances with parameters. And uh, all that data. Uh, and uh, it needs to be that way because now we're, people are using 3D viewers. Like you turn on a filter, I want to see all the walls on level five that has fire rating, this and that. Okay. And in order to make that process work, I mean, or let's start a different place. In order to make that process even remotely possible, the people who receive the data, who look at the iPad and then turn off and on filters and move around the rooms, they need to be able to trust that what they are doing or looking at is correct. And for them to be able to do that, the data quality needs to be good. It needs to be 100%. Or else they will just throw the iPads away and take up the drawings again. And the only way that people can produce that information today is by punching parameters in Revit. You click on a column, properties palette, blah, 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 blah. And it's all like usually text parameters, uh, instance. So instance text parameters in Revit. And it's the same story in Archicad and Tecla and all the other BIM software. So what happens? Well, yeah. Because when we say that the, the drawings go away and we're going to digitize the digital construction, um, the owner and the contractor gives you a list of requirements. Like on a wall, you need to see this information. On a door, you need to see this information. And uh, that job of creating that data, it almost always goes to the Dynamo programmer on the project. And I used to be that person. I was that person on the government quarters. And uh, and that puts, uh, because, of course, it's impossible. You have 500,000 elements. And, and even think about the MEP disciplines that have, like, so, so, so many elements in their Revit files. And then you multiply that by, like, a parameter count of, like, 20 to 50 instance text parameters that people have to type in with the keyboard. And that job goes to the Dynamo Coder, and Dynamo Coder makes like 20, 50 Dynamo scripts on the project that he needs to run every time anyone models a new wall or a new door or a new something. And yeah, so that's just a shitstorm. And, uh, and, and, and that is, in 
very, very uh, down to earth practical terms, how the process of using Revit, uh, and it's not, I feel like a little bit unfair to say that Revit is hurting this process. I mean, Revit was built for something else. Revit was built for creating like coordinated drawing uh, sets. Um, right, yeah. not streaming uh, data through common data environments out to construction sites. So we need some new tools that do this better. Yeah. Uh, we have a couple of interesting questions. Uh, David says, I yearn for a time when building projects will no longer have drawings. So do you think that the need that many places, I guess it depends on the countries, but here we still require a set of PDF and a set of drawings. Do you think that's slowing down digital construction? That That's a big part of the puzzle. And can we finally move on to having uh, BIM models as the deliverable and what is used for construction? Do you think that would help? I, th I think absolutely, like 100%. Uh, it's... I did a presentation in Iceland in Reykjavik last week, and we talked about this conundrum that we have so many companies and so many people talking about design automation. Um, and there's like big companies, even Autodesk now are with Forma, that is like design automation. And uh, very few people or some companies and some people are talking about it, but I feel that like that's proportionally uh, a little bit of a, there's a, I'm not saying like, Design automation is not important. It's super important because it impacts the final result of physical building on site in a very important way. But I've seen so many architects and engineers sitting all day long producing documentation in Revit. And it, and uh, we, we just have to make that process of producing construction site documentation faster. And one of the one of the things that I always found difficult to accept with BIM was that I would, and I would build pretty good Revit models. Like I did that for a living for a number of years and they are like high quality Revit models, pretty detailed. Some of them also, I presented a lot of them at Autos university throughout the years. And it seemed so stupid to like cut them you know, section through them and then put on sheet and then title block and then control, print, 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 print. Uh, it, it just seems like a little bit of a wasted potential. So, of course, at the same time, you can't really detail everything in the micro level inside of Revit. Everyone knows that that's impossible. So I'm not saying that the drawings will like disappear from the planet of the earth. But I think it's pretty clear that the main source of truth needs to move away from, from PDFs and paper drawings to, to data. And I don't care so much if it's an IFC file or something else, but it needs to be data or we will never digitize the construction industry. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And how is are the contractors in, in Norway? Because I think here it's a limitation. We have, even the architects might have the most fancy BIM machines with amazing models. But in the end, if some of the builders, some are, some of them are getting there, like are getting pretty advanced in BIM, but not all of them. And that seems to be, and there's still this city requirement, legal requirement uh, of drawing. So we have to take this the Cadillac, the, the yeah. models, and then convert it into a ladder or something uh, to, to get the, the drawings. But I'm like, yeah, it would be nice to use the the first source of information and get rid of this this filtering that uh, reduce the quality of yeah. what we're building. It's an educational process that is taking a lot of time, of course. I mean, in many in many industry, I mean, in the for me. 20 years ago, BIM kind of got introduced in Norway. I know it was a little bit earlier in North America probably, but but around 20 years ago was when the first big projects started using BIM in Norway, and it started with architects. They were first. It also started with the, the government, actually. That is a different story we can talk about some other time. But like Norway had the push of... Uh, Norway pushed BIM both from the bottom and the top. Um, 
but uh, the architects started and then it spread to the engineers. But still today, there's a lot of people in the value chain outside of the core design team who are kind of new to BIM and who are learning about 3D and elements with attributes on them. So that I don't think that process will will never be done with that. <laughs> That's just, you know, uh, one of the things that we're going to have to live with for the rest of our lives probably is that there's a continuous <laughs> learning in the industry and then um, the, the how, I mean, uh, talking about LOD, like uh, the level of development in different, different parts of the AEC industry is going to be different at different times. The contractors in Norway, they are now like all the big ones. They have people working on digital construction and, and learning how to build from a model. Um, actually, in, 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 if you, when you talk about digital construction in Norway, the term that we use is often like model-based construction. Model based. Um, so... But I would be lying if I said that there was like mass adoption. Uh, there's still like large parts of the construction industry in, in Scandinavia and Europe that it's uh, still has a, a long way to go. It's a lot of good examples and good, how do you say, case studies. Um, but the mass adoption is still missing. And I think it, I think in many ways it has like, it, it's probably not the, the, the biggest problem is that it, is it takes time for people to build up good stories and share them with other people and then get more people hooked on the idea um, but also like once we build the trust in the data when once people know that there's a hundred percent data quality that they are receiving that they will start you know now i'm ready i think that is we're going to see that too